Hello and welcome back to Adventure All The Way. I'm Emma and I'm a home educating mum of three from the UK. And someone's at the flipping door. So I wanted to talk a little bit today about why I think it's important for people to learn a second language or rather why I think it's important for my children to learn a second language. Um, I really struggled learning French and German when I was at school. I never tried Spanish um, until we went to Mallorca last year. Um, I probably know enough French that I can pronounce the words if I'm looking, it on, looking at it on Google Translate and the same with German. Um, but I don't know enough to just have a conversation. Um, if someone spoke to me in French, I would be like, one minute and have to think about it and maybe I'd be able to answer it would depend on what they said um I don't I have a I, I did a GCSE in French but I certainly have not remembered enough to um be able to actually have a conversation in any way a shape or form and I was a nanny for a German family for about a year and I picked up a lot of German um understanding when i was with them so when i listen to someone speaking german i can kind of understand what they're saying but i wouldn't be able to answer them in german and i wouldn't be able to read german so i think it's really important to be able to learn a language i think it's a life skill that will last you forever if you learn it and then you keep it up but i am not teaching my children a foreign language i decided this year with my husband my children's dad that we would not teach them French or German unless they wanted to, or Spanish or Italian or whatever. We, unless they said, I want to learn this language, we wouldn't encourage them. Because I feel like you can just get your phone and you can type into Google Translate and you can either say it or you can press play and hold it at the person. And I know that sounds really, it sounds so British, doesn't it? Like, parlez-vous anglais like that kind of person that just shouts do you speak english at people when they go to france um but i'm not saying if you're going to france don't learn french what i'm saying is that as a life skill learn a language you're actually going to use so my thoughts were i do want you to learn a second language i do want this to be useful um i want this to be inclusive because that's how we are as a family and yes learning french or german or spanish or italian or i don't know swedish like anything like that would be amazing but what if we learnt british sign language i feel that if i'm going to be teaching and learning and then teaching a second language i should start with something that would allow me to communicate with fellow British people. Um, there are about 150,000 people in the UK that are part of a deaf, the deaf community or who are deaf um, who are using British Sign Language um, as their first language. And that's amazing. I did not know that there was such a big number of people who used British Sign Language. Um, I guess I'd never thought of it. Being someone who is hearing and lives in the hearing community, I had never ever thought about it. That I should have a look at the British Sign website because they're doing courses for level one British Sign Language really with a really discounted price to encourage people to do it, for something to do during lockdown, to keep their charity going. And I was like, that's really cool. And that's a really good price, even if you don't take the I'm a key worker or money's a bit tight option. So, I signed myself up. I've decided that I will learn British Sign Language and I will teach it to my children. Um, I did Makaton with them when they were very small, when they were babies. I They were all signing by the time they were nine months. We only taught them, excuse me, we only taught them signs that were really important. So they <laughs> knew milk, they knew mama, they knew dada, they knew more than you please and thank you then you hungry drink nappy change and sleep and i was like really when you're a baby what more do you need i think charles learned cake as well and i'm like really there's nothing else you need when you're like a year old mummy daddy basic needs met and cake <laughs> um i was like let's take this a step further let's learn british sign um also at some point in the future we would really like to adopt and i don't want to rule out adopting a child who has any hearing difficulties at all um 
because we're not gonna be able to communicate with them i was like if we have british sign language that opens up more children that we could um that we could consider bringing into our family and it's not only that it's just like they're so I think it would be really, really cool for the children if they learnt British Sign Language. It would mean that there's more opportunities for them as they're older. But also, how nice would it be if they met someone who was deaf and they could communicate with them? Like, that would be a lovely surprise, I'm sure, for the deaf person, but also a really, really lovely experience for my children to be able to converse with someone in the same way that I surprised someone when we went on holiday to Sicily a couple of years ago by asking or trying to ask for 10 sausages uh, apparently I said it wrong but he appreciated my effort as he said into my google translate bit on my phone so I decided that we would do this and I've just done the first lesson on the British sign website here's my laptop it's actually Phil's laptop but you know if you're married we share things you can't really see much so i'll zoom in in a minute but i'm just going through the intro and the intro to bsl on here it talks about what is british sign language and what is autism i had never heard of autism i thought i had misread it and it said autism and i was like what that's a whole different thing and i was like oh autism autism is like sexism or racism but it's about stigma and discrimination against people who are deaf or who are part of the deaf community there's also two different types of deaf people. There's deaf people with a big D and deaf people with a little D. Deaf people with a capital D are people who are part of the deaf community and who were born deaf. People who are, have, are deaf with a little D were people who became deaf after they were hearing. I had no idea, did you? Did you know that? Leave me, let me know in the comments if you knew that because I did not know that. I'm learning things every day. And if you can see that giant pile of stuff, that's a pile that I need to put in the loft. I don't want to put it in the loft. Phil can put it in the loft. But excuse the mess, I'll just pretend it's not there. Raise it. So, it talks about what using your primary hand. I'm right handed, so I'm going to be using my right hand. And then it gives you the first sign, which is welcome. Um, I will be speaking when I sign to help my children understand it. They're all very visual learners and kinetic and kinesthetic learners. I can never say that word. Um, so I want to encourage them to know the word as well. So welcome. I apologize if you speak British Sign Language um, or read British Sign Language or are deaf and this is your first language and I am butchering it. I do apologize, please forgive me. I'm still learning. So the next thing it goes on to is about finger spelling and I'm just going to show you the video. It's just literally like a 50 second video where it shows you how to finger spell. Turns out I knew most of them already, which I didn't know. I did learn some sign language when I was in rainbows and I've talked a few times before how I'm a rainbow leader myself now. When I was in rainbows 25 years ago, I learnt finger spell in British Sign Language. This is a memory that only occurred to me as I sat and watched this video for the first time. I was like, I already know how to do this. <laughs> what? That is a skill that my brain locked away like, we don't need that. And suddenly it's come back into my head and I've gone, yeah, I did. Yeah, I did. So I knew most of these already, which I was like singing into my head. I was going A, B, C, D, hang on, D. E, F, I think, F, 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 G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y and Z. Woohoo! <laughs> you couldn't see that very well, but you can see I was moving my hand. But yeah, in, and you got to hear me sing again. I keep singing at you. I don't really mean to. It just happens. I'm one of those people. Like Zoe Deschanel in um, New Girl, I just sing a lot. So moving on to the next activity on here. It shows you a finger spelling chart, which you can print out, which is very useful. And I think I will do that right now, because otherwise I'll forget to do it. Um, I would really suggest if it's something that you're interested in learning, maybe doing a project on, I think it would make a great unit study. Um, 
you know, even if you only pay, you don't pay all of the money, um, which I would encourage you to do if you can. Um, it also is going to encourage you to um, learn it on the other hand as well, just so you can understand both. So yeah, and then it gives you a challenge here. It's a finger spelling challenge. It says using the two minute finger spelling challenge to practice and improve your finger spelling skills. You can use the slider to change the finger spelling. Freeze. Freeze? Speed. <laughs> I've never drunk enough tea today. So this um, is a really, really great platform. I'm really, really enjoying it. And I would really, really recommend that you give it a try. I think that it would be great if you learn, if anyone learned how to finger spell in British Sign, because at least it would mean you would be able to communicate with someone who uses it as their first language if you were in a pinch, which may be a sign as well. Maybe this is a sign. I'm gonna find that out. So um, I'm really looking forward to trying this more and to teaching the kids a little bit later on. Um, Albert's, um, I'm gonna show Albert in a minute and I'm gonna see if I can get some footage of him doing some finger spelling. And just to show you how easy it is to teach children how to finger spell. Um, I will see you on Thursday for another video. I think it's gonna be a good one. I'm really excited about it. So I will see you on Thursday, have a great week and let me know, can you finger spell your name? Bye.